We're going to look at creating AI music videos with OpenArt, and now might be a really good time for that because OpenArt has a contest called the OpenArt Music Video Awards, where they're giving away over $50,000 in cash along with subscriptions, shoutouts, and a feature on a billboard in Times Square for the best AI music videos created with OpenArt. That $50,000 in prize money is split among multiple award categories, so there'll be lots of winners. Head over to OpenArt to see all the details and how you can enter your music video masterpiece. OpenArt is the sponsor of this video. I've been working with them for a little over a year now, and I'm always happy to share what they've got going on, like their story tool that you can use to create an AI music video. In the music video story tool, you have four modes to pick from. Singing video, which creates an AI lip sync of your subject or character singing the song. Narrative video, which which creates scenes that tell a visual story based on the lyrics of your song. Visualizer, which uses consistent color, style, and light, but may not necessarily tell a story like the narrative video does. And then the lyrics video, which puts the text of the lyrics on various objects. It can be billboards, street signs, walls, or anything else. Let's start with the singing video. First, we need to give it a song. You can either paste a link if your song is on Suno or TikTok, or you can drag and drop a song file up to five minutes in length. You can trim up the beginning or end of your song if you need to, and then play to preview. I already trimmed my song to 38 seconds before I brought it in here, so we're good and we'll hit confirm. After that, choose your artist. This is who will be doing the singing. You can use any characters that you've created on OpenArt using their consistent characters feature, or any of the public characters that OpenArt offers, or back here on the All tab, you can click Custom and upload an image to use just for this video. Drag and drop the image, give it a name, and then you have two options. Train character for higher consistency will take you to OpenArt's character feature where you can create a character to use over and over again. Then you'd come back in here and select that character that you had just created. The bottom button, Create Character, is just using the subject in your image for this video. It's not actually creating a character like the characters feature. I'm going to close out of here because I want to use my consistent character Shay that I've already created. Below that, I'm going to turn on the toggle to allow character outfit changes. I don't need Shay to stay in whatever outfit she was wearing when I created her as a character. I'd prefer the wardrobe robots change things up to fit the scene. The next thing is set the scene, and that's optional. You can give a short description of the scene or vibe up to 100 characters, like if you want an outdoor scene or the character to be in a forest, or you can leave this blank and it'll come up with something based on the lyrics. Then we have the aspect ratio. I'm going to leave that on 16 by 9. Below that are the advanced options. Click this little drop down over on the right. The first option is whether you want to include B-roll shots in your video. If you turn that on, it'll include some clips that aren't of your character singing, but it'll try to make them relevant to the song based on the lyrics. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. The next option is match the video to the beat. If you turn that on, it'll try and make the video clips cut on the beat. We'll go ahead and leave that one on. The next option is show captions. If that's on, it'll add simple captions or subtitles. You can turn those off later in the timeline view, or you can add them later too. So I'm going to go ahead and leave those off. Next, we have the image model. That's set to character since we're using one of the consistent characters that I created here on OpenArt. If we'd gone with custom up here and gave it an image to use for a one-time character, then we might want to switch that to Nano Banana or Sea Dream. This is the model that'll be used to create the starting images that will then be used to create the video clips. And so then our next option is the video model. We can pick between OpenArt Lip Sync or Hedra. I'm going to use OpenArt Lip Sync. And now we can either create the full video or preview the storyboard. Now if we do create full video, it'll figure out how many scenes to create. It'll generate all the images for those scenes. Then it'll go ahead and generate the video clip for each one of those scenes and put it all together. If we go with preview storyboard, it'll stop after it generates the images so that if you don't like any of them, you can redo those images before spending the time and credits to generate the video clips. We're just going to go for it and click create full video. It takes a few minutes to generate, but you can close this page or go somewhere else. You'll get an email when the video is ready, and you can just go to Story on the menu, and then down around the middle of the page here, you'll find the stories that you've created. Let's see how ours turned out. Neon skies paint the night so loud Shadows dance in a glittering crowd A spark in my chest A rhythm untamed
electric heartbeat. Okay, there was some good stuff in there and some not so good. So let's click edit the story. And that brings us into the storyboard view of this music video. For each scene, you have the prompt that was used to generate the image. Then you have the image that it generated. Then that image combined with this video generation prompt was used to generate the video. So if the starting image and the video prompt look good, maybe you just need to re-roll the video. If the starting image isn't so good, like maybe this one on the runway, we want her to be facing us and not away we can come over to the prompt. Maybe instead of facing the glowing catwalk, we'll get rid of facing and say on the glowing catwalk. And then here after audience, we'll add facing the camera. Now we'll click retry image and that turned her around so she's facing us. If we didn't like that image and wanted to go back to the original, we just click it here. But I think the one where she's looking our direction makes a lot more sense. Over here on the right, it says the image has been updated. It's reminding us that we need to regenerate the video. So I'll go ahead and click that retry video button and then let's scoot down to another scene here this one where she's turned away from us again it looks like this word facing when we have her facing something in the prompt it wants to turn her away from us instead of facing we'll say near a stage door with a glowing edge and let's go ahead and just retry image on that see if it gets her turned around well we're not looking at her back anymore that's better but it looks like some of this clothing is just half articles so let's go ahead and do a reroll on that okay we'll go with this let's come over here and retry video. Now you can redo all the images at one time with this generate all images and you can do the same thing with video. If you want to regenerate all these videos in one shot, you know, make any changes to the prompts that you want, make any changes to the images that you want, and then regenerate all the videos for the whole thing in one shot. You can also add a new shot at the end of the video or in between any of the scenes. You've got a plus button here. You can add a new scene in there or you can delete a scene. Here's our new runway video. We'll take a look at that. Okay, looks like she's walking toward the camera singing. I'm good with that. Here's our new backstage hallway video. All right, that's looking pretty good. Not sure what she's holding in her hand there, but I think we're gonna stick with it for now. You can click the preview button up top to watch the whole video through. And if you wanna export from here, click the export button. And if you don't want the watermark, click that remove watermark toggle and click export and download. We're gonna switch over and take a look at the timeline view of the editor. This gives us all our assets on the left-hand panel. You've got the video Videos, then the next tab is images, then the next one is your music, then the voiceover tab, which really doesn't apply to a music video, and then the text tab. This is where you can add captions to the video if you didn't do that when creating it. Just do detect captions and then toggle on the display captions option. Down at the bottom, you've got a video track. You can click on any one of these videos, then you'll see the properties over on the right. You can also change the prompt and retry the video from here. Down in the timeline, you can trim any of these video clips by just grabbing and dragging, or if the video is longer than what's actually on the timeline, you could extend it out a bit more. I don't really want that one extended out to 5.4 seconds, so I'm going to come up here to my favorite button, the undo, bring that back to where it was. For the audio track, if you select that, then over here in the properties panel, you can adjust the volume, you can change the speed, and you can adjust a fade in or fade out. Right now it has a three second fade out that you can see there visually. If we did go ahead and add those captions, we'd click detect captions. It went ahead and turned on the display captions toggle and we can see them right there in our preview. Then if I put my mouse somewhere over the timeline and scroll, I can see the captions layer is now just below the audio. And if I click on one of those captions, I can make changes like the font, the size, the color, and all those goodies. I'm going to go ahead and turn those captions back off. There's a lot more that I would probably want to change about this music video, either here in the timeline or in the storyboard. But I'm going to hold off on that for now. Let's go back out to the story tool, back into music video. Let's take a look at the narrative video. Bring in your song the same way, either paste a link from Suno or TikTok, or just drag and drop your music file and click confirm. You've got the same options for the character. You can click custom, drag in an image of a subject, and then either train that into a custom character that you can use over and over again, or just click create character if you only want to use that subject image for this video. Or you can use one of your characters you've already created on OpenArt using their characters feature or one of their public characters. I'm going to use my character Shay. Below that, switch this toggle to yes if you want to allow character outfit changes. Then optionally, you can write a storyline. If you want to give it some direction about the story, you've got up to 500 characters to do that, or you can leave it blank and let it figure out the story from your song lyrics. The next option is one take style and if you toggle that on it'll make the clips flow seamlessly from one to the next without looking like they have cuts. 
then select the aspect ratio and below that click this drop down to see the advanced options and in there we can do match video to beat that'll try and get the scene changes to line up with the beat of the music and whether you want captions I'll go ahead and turn that one off for the image model it's got character since I'm using one of my consistent characters then choose your video resolution and video model if we go with 720p cling 2.1 standard looks like my 38 second video will be 1385 credits if I switch that to Minimax Hilu 02 it would be 765 credits at 720p then either do the create full video or preview storyboard again preview storyboards a lot less credits and a little quicker to generate and it'll just produce the images for all the scenes and you can make any changes before you generate the video clips for those scenes now I already generated a narrative video with all these settings for this song and here's how it turned out neon skies paint the night so loud shadows dance in the glittering crowd a spark in my chest a rhythm untamed who lit this fire who still be blamed boom boom goes my electric heartbeat can't stop now i'm glued to the beat shock waves run and they don't retreat boom boom goes my electric heartbeat so yeah, there was some goofy stuff in there, like in the beginning, her jacket doesn't have a back. That's kind of weird. But then when she was walking down the hallway and just as the chorus starts, the shot switches to her walking on stage, but the camera's still behind her. That was cool. Never mind that she's on a stage behind the audience and not in front of them. And then a few shots later, she starts dancing and there's no morphing, no extra limbs, nothing weird, like just legit dancing. That was great. Again, never mind the fact that the entire audience is facing away from her. So far, we've looked at the singing video and the narrative video. Let's check out the visualizer. I'll drag and drop my song file in there. We'll click confirm. For the visualizer, we need to choose a style. You can leave it on auto and let it figure it out. You can go to custom and describe your own style, or you can pick one of these preset styles, rock haze, noise collage, vapor wave. Let's go cyberpunk. For this one, I think we'll leave the one take style on so we can have that seamless flow from shot to shot. We'll leave the aspect ratio at 16 by nine. For the advanced options, we've got match video to the beat. We'll leave that on. We'll turn off the show captions. We can always add those later. The default image model for the visualizer is flux context. You've got some other options there. We'll just stick with the default. For the video model, it looks like it's Seadance 1.0 Lite. That's fine. We'll go ahead and create full video. And here's what we got from visualizer mode. Neon skies paint the night so loud. Shadows dance in the glittering crowd. A spark in my chest. There's one last music video mode, and that's a lyrics video. Bringing in your music works the same way. Either paste a link from Suno or TikTok, or drag in your audio file and click confirm. Then you've got this animated video toggle. If you leave that off, your lyrics will show up on objects as basically still frames. If you turn this toggle on, it'll be videos with some movement instead of just a still image. You've got your aspect ratio, and then under advanced options, it's just a matter of your image model. You've got a few there to pick from and then your video model if you're doing the animated video. Like with the other music video modes, you can either do preview storyboard or you can create the full video. Here's what the lyrics video looks like with the animated video toggle turned off. Shadows dance in the glittering crowd, a spark in my chest. So it just goes through static images of the lyrics placed in different places. And here's what the lyrics video looks like with the animated video toggled on. Shadows dance in the glittering crowd. So what I want to do now is combine the best from what each one of these modes produced into one music video. 
But before I do that, I'd like to have a little bit more lip sync footage than what I got from the one singing video. So I'm going to come over to video and then lip sync video. I'm going to bring in a static image of my character Shay. For the prompt, I'm going to say the woman is singing passionately into the microphone, looking directly into the camera. I'll use the open art lip sync model. I've got some other options there, but I'm going to go with open art lip sync. And that gives me up to 90 seconds here in the lip sync video tool. That's less than the five minute limit you have over in the music video story tool, but the song I'm working with is under 90 seconds, so that'll be fine. If it was longer, I could always split it up. Now for this particular song, it might be kind of hard for it to distinguish between the vocals and the music. So I took my song file into CapCut and isolated the vocals and then exported it. Here's a little bit of what it sounds like. Neon skies paint the night so loud. Shadows dance in the glittering. I'm hoping that'll give me a better lip sync result than to make the AI lip sync tool have to try and figure out what's music and what's vocals. We'll go ahead and create, and then I'm gonna swap out the image here. I've got one of her in a warehouse. For this one, I'll say the woman's singing confidently while looking into the camera. I don't wanna say anything about a microphone because she doesn't have a microphone in this image. We'll click create on that one. Gonna run it with another image where she's standing in the street. We got kind of a high camera angle. This time I'll just say the woman's singing passionately. We'll create on that one. And then I've got one last image. Here she's in the street, different camera angle, and she's kind of got her arms out a bit there. And I'm going to stick with the open art lip sync model. Hedra would be the same price. It has a 60 second maximum file upload. OmniHuman is really expensive, like 2,925 credits instead of 585 credits. And then Kling would require that I create a video to use before I can create the lip sync video. Let's try something different here. We'll say the woman's singing as the camera moves to a low angle and we'll click create on that one. Now I'm going to go into CapCut. You could do this in any video editor though. I'll bring all those story music videos in, the singing video, the narrative, the visualizer, and the lyrics video and put each one of them on a separate track. I also bring in all the videos created with the lip sync tool and put each of them on a separate track. Then I'm just going to start on the top track and keep the parts that I like and cut out the stuff that I wasn't crazy about. Then I'll hide that track, move down to the next track and do the same thing. Now that the rough cut's done and I've got each section narrowed down to a few clips, I'll go through again section by section and just pick the one clip I'm going to use. I'll put them on a new track at the top to build my final video. But I'm not going to delete anything off these other tracks yet in case I want to make some changes. I went ahead and brought in my original audio file in WAV format. That way I have the best quality rather than something that's been processed through several tools. I'll clear out the audio from these other clips when I have everything put together, but I'm going to keep it right now so I can use the waveform to line things up if need be. And here's the finished video. Neon skies paint the night so loud. Shadows dance in the glittering crowd. A spark in my chest. The only thing I added in CapCut is in these scenes where she's standing in the street, I added this purple mist effect from up here in the effects. Now, if you're thinking the way I created this little music video took a whole lot of credits to generate a whole bunch of stuff, you're absolutely right. I probably didn't need all four of those story videos, the singing, the narrative, the visualizer, and the lyrics, but I wanted to show you how they all worked. It also might have been smart if I had invested a little time in those optional prompts that I left blank in the story tool for the various modes. And it might have been more efficient to use that preview storyboard option in the story tool to get the images dialed in first, make sure they're all set before generating all the video clips and the final video. So I'm not saying anything I did was the best way to go about it, but hopefully it gives you some ideas for how to do it better. I'll leave a link to OpenArt in the description of this video so you can head over there and start creating your music video. Hey, my name is Bob. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining, and I hope you'll come back and join me for another video.